Um, leadership. Let's uh, get to act on. Where's the leadership? There it is. Um, <coughs> Okay, so leadership. Um, both the clients and the providers have uh, a pretty agile mindset uh, uh, around change control or the change request. Agile for teams, leader awareness is missing, that's phenomenally common. Uh, management buy-in, that's almost always a serious problem. My good friends in the project management community generally don't get it. Um, leadership and senior management doesn't need coaching, we're all good, coach the teams. Yeah, so um, that's a serious problem. We so my company coaches, you know, we do a lot of coaching, we do a lot of transformation stuff. Um, we try to do, um, um, educate the customer on the need for getting management coaching, you know, getting the executives coaching, getting middle management coaching, getting the teams coaching, and those are different things requiring different skills for coaches. And the coaches have got to be working together and all that sort of stuff. So, because the challenge is, if leadership doesn't understand, if they don't have an agile mindset, if they don't, or a lean mindset, whatever you're aiming for, then they're going to make bad decisions. And they won't know it. They won't know why. Right? And it'll be like, you know, and they're effectively, so when leadership doesn't understand agile, this is the equivalent of asking people to learn how to swim. And oh, by the way, here, put this anchor on the neck, because that's the best practice in my, in my fantasy world, right? So learn to swim with an anchor, which is hard enough to do. But do it with an anchor around your neck because we can't get our governance people under control. Right? This is the level of thinking we get in a lot of organizations. So um, yes, we have to help management understand. Oh, you, you know, do you realize that you just put an anchor around these people's neck? Right? You're slowing them down. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta change your ways. Uh, and this is IT management issues, finance, uh, you know, you know, QA. Um, you know, all these groups need to change their need to change their ways. Um, yeah, and, and that's a real challenge. So what, um, yeah, so the leadership thing on both sides. So uh, a few years ago, I used to work for a large, or, you know, a large, actually service provider organization, and um, they got into trouble with a client. We'll put it like that. And what had happened was the client procurement people had uh, asked for Agile. Oh, no, they no, they actually, uh, they had honestly procured a traditional team they, uh, the uh, partner on the service provider end I had signed up on a contract, and then uh, literally like 10 seconds before both sides signed it, they said, oh, you know, by the way, even though, we, even though we have a very clearly traditional contract in place, we're going to do Agile. Oh, yeah, fine, no problem, no, we can do Agile. Um, so the customer, the customer having no understanding what Agile was, Said, okay, let's do Agile. The partner, having no understanding what Agile is, oh yeah, we can do Agile. You know, we're the we're the best Agile people in the world, no problem at all. Um, so then that's what, what went in. So then, then that just flowed down to both the teams on both sides of the fence. So literally on the first day of this project, both teams threw the red flag. Yeah, so the customer team said we have no hope. Oh, yeah, and they had these ridiculous dates and you know fixed price, ridiculous dates, you know, stuff, right? The cust the people on the customer side threw that. There's no possible way this is going to work. Uh, we can't do Agile, you know, ridiculous contract. The, the worker bees on the uh, service provider end, they also said, no possible way this is going to work. Uh, we don't have, we can't staff this. You've made promises we can't keep. Um, so anyway, so I got brought in to settle it out. And sure enough, it was the, lead, it was the leadership problem. Yeah, you, had all, you had these executives with no clue what they were doing, and they're signing a multi-million dollar contract. It was absolutely ridiculous. Was like zero possibility of ever working out. Um, so, you need, at least on your end of things, you need to help your leadership understand, here's how Agile works, here's what you need to push back on, here's how we need to work with our customers over the next few years to help them understand Agile. And that might mean some rough conversations with procurement people, as we were talking about earlier. Um, so yeah, you got to get management buy-in. Another challenge with moving to Agile, I'm sure you're seeing it, is middle management gets squeezed out, because Agile helps make things more productive. Right? We squeeze out the bureaucracy. We're more effective. Well, what is the implication for the bureaucrats? We're squeezing out bureaucracy. That means we're squeezing out the bureaucrats. So the bureaucrats that have to either start adding new value, which means they need to transition into an agile role, or they need to find employment elsewhere. Right? This is the hard, one of the harsh realities of doing these transformations. You can't keep the same management overhead that you used to have. Right? So that yeah, it sounds great for the you know the, the trenches. Not so great for the people in middle management. Right? So, um, so you get pushed back on that. Does that make sense? Yes. 
And, oh, another thing, um, uh, so I'm sort of going beyond scope here. Um, you have to invest in more than just leadership. I worked at, uh, with one organization a few years ago, and their entire idea of an agile transformation was to send everybody on a two-day leadership course and then tell everybody, oh, you know, here's your, you know, a wa waiver magic wand. You're all leaders now. You're smart and you can figure it out, right? And that was it. That was the extent of the support that people got. So they got back to work with no idea how to do anything. They're all, you know, they all had, you know, they all thought they were leaders now, but, you know, you know no, none of them were followers, right? Everybody's going to be a leader. Um, that worked out very poorly. So, anyways. It, no Debbie, just seeing this also, it seems to me, at least in my experience working with clients, that um, maybe a year ago or a year and a half ago, people were actually trying to get closer on the agile journey, the clients and service providers. Yeah. Now, clients seems to have decided that any service provider who comes and says, I have 20 scrum teams on tap, is basically doing some of what we just spoke about here. And so they were <coughs> beginning to accept that as the de facto reality and trying to deal with it rather than trying to do a, a true agile transformation. Yeah, yeah, so I think um, what all depends on the company, right? Um, but yeah, so it depends on how far, you know, like it, it should be a reasonable expectation that service providers can do agile. That is not unreasonable. Um, the problem is, is on, once again on the customer end, can they actually govern in an agile manner? Can they procure? Are they will? Are there people you know, in the middle of the project? Are they willing to step up and you know be actually involved? And maybe people on planes and, and stuff like that. Can they you know can they provide product owners that can actually do the job? Which might mean they need to you know ship the product owners over here for several months. Which you know not a lot of people want to sign up for that. Because they deal with families and stuff like that. Right? So um, that's a challenge. Um, so. They are the ones to do that, but yeah, I think you're right. Like you know, as or, you know, as the service providers are more <coughs> more down the agile path, and as the or companies are more the customers are more down the agile path, it'll be a lot easier to have, make this happen. 